DLD services back at you, giving you guys a little intel on my mind, my mind thoughts, and my process is all backwards. I hope you guys enjoy my two recent videos. I know it's a little, little crazy, especially that last one with me taking the motor out. I speed up because I actually pay attention to what keeps people's attention. And if I would have slowed it down to normal time, a lot of people get bored with that. So I decided to speed that process up a little bit. And I failed you guys because I used the GoPro on my head instead of used a fixed camera from an angle so you can see everything that I was working with. So I live, learn, in the next video, I'll make sure I have a fixed camera instead of having me shake my head around, give you guys a seizure. Apologize. All right, let's talk about Let's talk about my transition to a Harley. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's 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 start this out right. The true beginning of my Harley game. So I have I had a uh, Suzuki C50 Boulevard, but my version was called a Velusa. Only difference. The only difference is the Velusa was actually uh, carbureted. The C50 Boulevard was fuel injected. I uh, jetted my car, put a put a uh, pod filter on the top, changed my exhaust, uh, jetted it correctly. It ran great, sounded excellent with the Vance and Hines. Of course, I'm a Vance and Hines fan. Um, I rode that for years. That was my first bike I actually put my hands on to actually fabricate. I have a painter out there. I think it's Earliesville or Barbersville, Earliesville. But uh, J.R. Harris, his son is Travis Harris. And I forget his name. His, his name of his actual uh, his actual sticker that he gave me. I'll probably post it in the video. I'm saying it. I don't know right now. I'll post it in the video. So you, a hard act to follow, I believe, is his is his brand name or it's his actual name. But anyhow, he painted my bike a pearl white. Gorgeous. That boy Travis puts in work. That man can paint. So can his dad. Everything they touch, man. I, I've never had a problem with anything. They've done my truck. And if God will I get some more money, he'll do my next two cars. So I only have a, po a, a booth big enough to paint bikes. But back to it. So as far as all the body work, the bracket making for the bags that I bought that were universal from um, Matuzu, Mataza Matuzu, and uh, my cables and my handlebars. I did a whole bunch of things. I did LEDs, but that was my first bike I actually got into the game and started doing stuff with. So. I um, started uh, dabbing a little bit and I was leaving and taking a cruise with friends. And we're just doing a nice little weekend ride, about 12 of us I think, or 8 of us. Anyhow, they had Harleys, they had, my one buddy had a Victory, and then uh, a couple other, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the Cadillac of Hondas, the uh, Goldwing. And a couple other different bikes. Anyhow, we're at a light, we're lined up, nobody's in front of us. so. One person starts revving their motor, I'm like, oh, we about to play. And the other person starts revving their motor. So when the light turns green, you know what time it is. Who wants that smoke? Let's get it. So the light turns green, and uh, my buddy Shrek on his victory, and my buddy David on his Concourse 1000, and somebody had a Harley. Anyhow, I'm, I got my bike wide open. I mean, I got that thing barking. <laughs> that song gun is, is, is screaming. But for whatever reason, the louder my bike got, the further the distance between them in front of me and me getting further behind them. I said, nope, 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 nope. This don't make no damn sense. My bike sounded real good. It's kind of like these fighters nowadays. They talk all that talk. Just talking, jab, jab, jocking, da 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 da. Just talking all that trash. And the damn bell rung, got knocked out. I was like, what in the hell? So I said, no more of this. I gotta get me a Harley killer. I didn't expect to beat the Concourse. Concourse is a is a badass bike anyway, so I wasn't gonna like, expect it to just go out there and just mop that thing up. So I went shopping, got me a VTX 1800. I heard that was a Harley killer. It's the same as a couple other bikes. And when I say Harley killer, I'm talking about stock for stock. It's a Harley killer. So I got the Harley. I mean, I'm sorry. I got the Victor. Oh, damn it, the VTX 1800. And uh, it showed sure up. I was highly surprised. It is a horse. Problem is maneuverability. It sucks. Um, it's it's a hard bike to, to steer. I've gotten used to it, but I'm I'm also six two, 
uh, weighing in at 200 pounds. So, I mean, I really had to learn how to ride this thing. And I rode a couple of buddies' Harley as far as the Road Glide, Road King, uh, uh, you name it, I've ridden it Harley-wise as far as present day. And those bikes maneuver so well. They handle it excellent. I cannot deny Harley on that. They handle excellent. They just, out the factory box power, it's not really that impressive to me. So, um, I got I got the uh, VTX and I was very happy with it. And they had a lot of different kits out for it. It was a respected bike as far as like aftermarket goes. So I purchased me purchased me a uh, bagger kit from Backyard Air Suspension. Great, 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 great. Really good um, kit. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Really good kit. So I bought the kit and I fabricated it up. Fabbed it. I fabbed it up. Um, I did mock-ups hundreds and hundreds of times because I'm OCD like that. And of course, you guys see the end result of the red bike. I mocked it up hundreds of times. I had a paint job in my head that I was going to do, and I actually pursued and did my my. Was that, was, yeah, that was my first airbrush job. So yeah, my VTX 1800, the red bike. If you look at the skulls, and that was my first actual airbrush job. Uh, don't think I did freehand. I'm not gonna go ahead and sit here and lie to you guys. I use a stencil and I lined it out. You know, I took my time and it looks great. You know, a lot of people that paint their stuff, you know, I'm not gonna take the pride in being freehand. I suck at it as an artist. I'm getting better, but you know, my version of suck might be different from somebody else's. So I want to make sure if I'm gonna paint or airbrush something on my bike, I want it to look good. So that's exactly what I did. I uh, bought some stencils. Uh, I can't remember where, I'll probably tell you guys later. And I enjoyed actually uh, airbrushing and painting my bike. It looks really good. Here, let me see if I can look down without crashing my bike. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? So already see the, anyhow, I, I'll keep my head up. I was looking up, so I wasn't driving blind, guys, trust me. But I uh, enjoy my bike, and a lot of Harley guys love the bike. They think it looks great, but I've always wanted me a Road King, because, you know, this is pretty, basically, I'm, basically copying a road king on this i don't know how many actual harley owners that i fooled that thought this was a road king i don't know how if you own a harley you would think this is a road king i guess if you can afford a road king and you can pay for it and buy it and you don't really do any any, any of your maintenance and stuff like that i can see how it can get past some people um but from my eyes view yeah it does look like a road king for the you know it's a harley rear end bagger kit uh, but the front wheel, the, there's no primary. It's shaft driven, it's not chain driven. Yeah, the continuous motor, there's a whole bunch of different things that make it, if you think about it. A whole bunch of different things that made them think that it was a Rogue King. But I, I really love the Rogue King, and my first Harley I was gonna get was gonna be a Rogue King. So I finally got to Richmond, and saw one on uh, Craigslist here. Craigslist, and I went down there, looked at it, loved it paid my money for it nice conversation with the gentleman that owned it and I bought that thing and I drove it home that night a buddy of mine my brother Jimmy took me down there to pick it up my man took his trailer and everything for me like I'm talking about like two hours notice like Jimmy I need some help blah blah blah, blah. anyhow good friend of mine he uh, grabbed his trailer in his truck we rolled all the way down there and uh, we picked up the the road king but the deal was for the price he asked, I was getting the Road King and that lift table. So I was like, hell yeah. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, ah, oh, this is too sweet. This is this is a, too good of a deal to be sweet. And and I'm assuming, you know, if he had that table, he probably was changing his oil and everything. But I ended up buying the Road King. I rode it back. My buddy wanted me to put it on the trailer, but I, I was dying to ride it. Ride my first Harley, Love Tower Road. Um, he took the trailer. We went all the way back to where I live in Charlottesville. And end up doing the first month that I always do is the handlebars straight up to the apes gotta put them gotta gotta put them hands up boy so I put my uh, apes on and as I was putting it on I had to get new cables and of course with your new cables you have to get your new uh, clutch cable and I was like well I gotta change the oil anyway I always change the oil I always change the oil on my uh, my bikes when I first get them because you don't know you don't you don't really know so I changed the oil I pulled that spark uh, the uh, bolt out with the magnet on it 
metal shavings. I said, what in the hell is this? What is, what is this? This is not normal. Any other circumstances, this is not good when you see metal shavings on an oil plug. So I looked it up and I was doing research on it anyway, as far as cams and things like that. And uh, of course now I've, I've educated myself as much as possible from the internet, which is a plethora of information. Uh, chain tensioner, exactly what happened. Anybody that you have any of those early uh, twin cam Harleys, I think up till, I think what time, I think they changed the, the spring tensioner to hydraulic tensioner in like 2000, three four five six seven I don't know that's a wide range I'll post it on the video when I'm actually doing it you'll see what year the spring tensioner stopped but from 99 to I'm gonna say 2007 I'm just gonna say that roughly the spring tensioners go bad on those things and when they go bad basically um, you have the chain that's riding for your, your cam gears and it throws metal shavings and if you get the metal shavings on there wow boom bombs and motors it's a done deal you got shavings on the damn thing so I paid what I paid for the bike and I got metal shavings in it and I basically had to start over as far as motor buys well I said well you know what I got this Harley I want to do this right anyway I don't own any bikes that I don't customize period let me just strip her down butt naked just naked so I'm gonna take the frame out, see what, what the uh, deal is on the transmission, how strong it is, and what options are for it. And that's where I'm at to this day right now with this Harley. I'm taking the uh, motor out because the frame is pretty rough. I need to paint it. So the motor's coming out. Uh, I have a cluster uh, kit that I'm gonna put inside that five speed uh, transmission and make it a six speed. And it's gonna be stronger and hold the torque that the new motor that I will put in will have. Um, one of the upgrades that I had to do was the uh, the rear uh, swing arm. The swing arms from 99 to 2002 are like paper thin. They're, 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 they're known all over the internet for cracking. Uh, 2003, they made a much stronger swing arm. So problem is, once you, once you go to a 2003 swing arm, you have to change it with the caliber because the bore of the caliber and the bore of the swing arm uh, are one inch axle. And the actual axle that I came with my bike, which is a 2000 Road King FLHRI fuel injected, uh, it came with a three-fourths axle. So uh, the wheels I wasn't worried about because I was getting rid of the wheels anyway. They're spoke wheels. Uh, so I have spoke wheels. If anybody wants them, hit me up. I'll give you a price, a good price for them. And tires. The tires are good and everything. But um, the axle one has a three-fourths, and I was going to jump up to a one-inch. So I was like, well, I'm going to get new wheels any damn way. So that's exactly what I did. I bought wheels from uh, online. I'm not gonna tell you where yet. And they're one inch axle. I got the real cap caliber, which is with a one inch axle. I got that 2003 swing arm, much stronger. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, as far as the belt driven, I'm changing it from belt driven to chain driven. Because torque, when you start adding torque, you wanna get away from belts because you'll, you'll shred them. There's too much torque for them. You'll shred them, shred them, shred them. So I'm trying to beef up the motor, which means you need to beef up the, the uh, transmission, which means you need to beef up your suspension, and which means you probably need to beef up your brakes. So uh, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna beef up the brakes. I haven't done any research on the brakes. I have seen some new calibers that were upgraded, but they were like $1,000 for a damn caliber. Grant, I'm not scared to spend money, but I'm already stretched out pretty, pretty wide with what I'm already doing and building, so. I am happy with the setup I have so far. So you see me take off the motor. I'm about to get into the transmission and clean that up. And as you guys get to witness and watch, I'm gonna go ahead and take that, that um, oil pan out and you can see the shavings in there. So you'll see that in real time. If you guys have any uh, suggestions what I can do better as far as camera wise for you guys, give me a heads up, comment, like, subscribe, say something, let me, let me, Get better for you guys so I can get better for us you know because without you guys being able to see it it gets pretty boring pretty fast and I want you guys to want to be able to watch the video all the way through I don't like the boring spots so the true fans out there that I obviously subscribe my ace ace uh, subscribers I guess my a one day ones which is almost at a thousand almost not yet but almost at a thousand 
uh, the big word for a thousand is once you get a thousand subscribers we pretty much can start to get monetized through YouTube which means you know funds and money now of course it's not gonna be anything substantial at a thousand subscribers but damn I love my first 800 that I have I love my first 10 and I'm gonna love my future subscribers because you guys are putting me in a place I'm I'm would like to be one day and it starts with you guys so give me a heads up don't be scared to say something let me know if I can do something better or or uh, or uh, give you better footage I want to because God knows I hate watching YouTube videos that have terrible footage but giving you guys our first vlog taking a little break I want to give me something to eat give me some Jimmy John's and uh, just cruising as you guys see it's a beautiful day Sun's out. I got my uh, Simpson helmet on. Oh, hold on. Let me see if you can see the actual skulls now. So, you see the skulls? It's pretty cool. I like it, but for the Harley, I think I'm going to do a pretty nice paint job. I'm excited about that one. But I'm just going to take it one plane at a time. It's going to be a pretty extensive winter as far as it's just turning, what is it, 20th of October right now? So I'm excited about that so I can go ahead and take my time but at the same time I would like to be done by spring. So when spring comes out I can get that damn thing on the road and start breaking in some miles. Because I know you got to break in, there's a time period you got to break in the new motor. Probably the transmission too but I want to go ahead and get that happening. Alright let's go. Let's go, Roscoe. and everything else I have a psychiatrist it's called this riding thing we do I get why a lot of veterans that come back from doing service and other people like to get on these bikes it just takes you away from all your stress I've worked healthcare for about 20 years and it's, you know obviously right now definitely it's, you know it's not getting any easier and then when you get a job that long you know the gets thick so I need these rods when I take them I definitely need these rides. They help me a lot. They just pull me away from all the stress, you know? That's why we love this game we do. But, you guys enjoy the ride. I'm about to give me some food and head back home. But thank you. My first vlog. Give me a shout out. I'm looking at my phone. Make sure you guys can actually see what's going on. Alright. Hungry as hell. She ain't got no damn helmet on. I'll be. Don't let the, don't let the police see you. The police get you. The police get you. I know she ain't about to. This lady behind me is trying to get in the road. She about to hit my rear end. I'm watching you, lady. all the people that haven't got a bike yet or thinking about getting a bike heads up when you ride behind a biker keep a good distance never around the ass of a biker because our brakes are 10 times better than yours so if we stop hard because something's in the road that just pops up you're gonna run us over the majority of the time when people get into car, uh, bike accidents it's really not the fall that gets them in majority of the time is the people that are driving behind them that run over the damn driver so be conscientious of that guys do not ride on the back of a biker because you can cause a major problem plus you gotta sleep at night some of y'all do care all right yeah buddy yeah buddy give me some Jimmy Jones Okay. 
we are here. You, buddy, look at that right there. Look at that.